Hi, everybody. Welcome to my channel. If we haven't met, my name is Marta Stubowska. I'm a concert violinist from Poland originally, and I live in the United States. I am former concert master of the Mississippi Symphony Orchestra, and I love sharing my expertise and experience with the repertoire that I am um, currently performing and all have performed in the past and teach as well. So uh, this is a series that I created to go through uh, various pieces in uh, violin repertoire in more in depth. So rather than just playing, uh, it's more of a masterclass and going through the piece in its entirety. So today we're going to talk about the Gypsy Airs or Trigoner Weizen by Pablo de Sarasate. And yes, it's not the hardest piece on the planet. However, uh, it is uh, full of wonderful techniques and stylistic questions that you may have. And uh, I have played this piece all my life and just enjoy it immensely every time I play it. But also uh, it is full of surprises and challenges. So I'm constantly discovering new, new things about it. So let's begin. So Pablo de Sarasate um, was a Spanish composer. And uh, in the music that I have here by Carl Fisher, the edition by Carl Fisher, New York, um, there's just a, a couple of sentences I'd like to read um, about the piece. It is hardly possible to prescribe any set of rules as to the exact, exact manner in which this composition is to be played. Uh, it should be interpreted with absolute freedom in order to resemble as closely as possible the character and style of improvised gypsy music. Um, so I agree with that completely. However, uh, sometimes students will take it too far and improvise everything from intonation to, to tone um, to to speed, to everything. So we want to make sure that the quality of this performance is good. We're not trying to be gypsy players, um, uh, amateurs in that sense, that uh, maybe asks for questions here about the technique. So we want to make sure that our technique is intact and that we're playing in tune and beautiful sound. And plus, then we add the freedom of interpretation. So let's begin from the beginning. Uh, moderato tempo, at the beginning we have an orchestra or uh, piano introduction, and then we have that uh, traditional opening. So that uh, needs to be a full, strong sound on the G string. So the fingerings are pretty standard. You just go to third position, and then you have... Uh, a little turn there. Of course, you can do your own turn there. There have been thousands of different interpretations of these turns. Um, however, this is what's originally written by Sarasate. And then we have a formata on that last note. And now begins uh, some virtuosity. So make sure that you are um, understanding this passage. So it's really not a scale as much as was a scale with uh, a skip. So we have, um, that's the scale. It's really a G minor uh, harmonic scale with, with, that, with missing A instead of having, or A. So we're in C minor here. Um, and we have a G, G minor scale here, G, G minor. And it happens to go for three octaves. So, so that's one octave. Um, that's the second octave, G to G, and then we start shifting. So um, in this edition, I like these fingering, so I personally use them. Um, go to one, one again, one, and one again, and then three on that highest E flat. So uh, I think I have a video where you can see how I also suggest practicing these. So um, I don't think I, I have an actual practice technique. I just mentioned that you have to make sure that your hand is traveling uh, around the instrument so that you don't get stuck with the shifting there. So then you have to go around the instrument again. So just take your time because there's some augmented intervals there, some thirds, 
and each time we're shifting with the first finger, if that's the finger you choose. So what I do is I go um, and then I change the bow on this top C and then E flat is down bow and then C. So you can uh, bow it in some other way. This is just the way I do it. Um, then we go back to G string, which is really kind of a characteristic uh, string for this rich gypsy or Hungarian or um, Romanian or whatever country uh, you want to um, imitate here or, or style. The G string is very popular, right? The violin G string. Yeah. So we have to jump now an octave. So I would suggest that you go because it's uh, fourth position. So it's just a little bit higher than the third position. Just try to hit the instrument there at the bout and you should be able to have that third finger. I don't, occasionally I don't hit it correctly, but most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, I hit it right. So. so I have some different fingerings here um, that I have experimented in the past, but this is gypsy music. We like to slide a lot, a lot of portamento. And I kind of do a little thing here. And then two chords. So I like those two chords to be kind of short, uh, full, but short without dragging them out. Then the piano or orchestra plays a scale, which then we have to get ready for that F which is kind of in the middle of nowhere. But of course, it is a position that we need to be aware of. So this is sixth position, right? So again, it's, again, it's the bout of the instrument that you have to get to. And as long as you have time, as long as you do it quickly, you don't actually have time. But as long as you do it very quickly and you place the finger before you play, then you should be able to find that third finger really well. And you also have to be able to hear that note. So you know, um, as long as we prepare it and uh, and also prepare your ear for it, make sure you hear. Okay, now we have uh, a diminished arpeggio, uh, which is uh, very long. It goes from that F in sixth position on the E string all the way to the G string. So um, make sure you get your rhythm correctly too. Don't, don't fudge the rhythm. Um, sometimes I hear students just kind of uh, skimming through the rhythm and skimming through the notes just because it's gypsy music. Uh, we do need to be accurate and make it beautiful. So, so all minor third. So I have three, one, two, one, those are the fingerings I'm playing. Second finger, first thing. So really, we're stretching the position. We're not really in one position in particular. So we have to really listen carefully so that diminished arpeggio is well in tune. So you can just play uh, individual notes, just the first note of each triplet. In um, this is measure. Well, it doesn't have measure numbers, um, but the, the uh, 30 second triplet one section. And then we have a scale. So that's, I slurred that in. There are different slurs, different additions, of course, for Boeings. So make sure that A5. And then we shift to G string, um, same A flat. So listen for that A flat. And then we climb up on the G string some more. So here's another uh, diminished arpeggio and make sure you get your beat. So one, two, ta 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 ta. But you have time because you are um, playing with a pianist or, or, or orchestra who will wait for you a little bit. But you do need to be aware of how that sextuplet actually, how fast it actually is. So uh, then you can be a little creative with the with the rubato. 
but it's one of the hardest passages here. So the minute. So I go one, two, three, and then three again. Then down to three. So there's some intonation to work on there because everything is very high and also also closer than it would be in first position. finish that F sharp back to G or to G major rather so we're going to the dominant so we were in C minor at the beginning now we're in G major okay so arpeggios of course uh, practice them slowly practice them separately uh, practice them in rhythms and match uh, the rhythms, so dotted rhythms, then reverse. And um, then you can do a triplets, quadruplets, uh, you can do separate. Those are different groupings, but it's overall, it's going to be it's not going to be measured uh, unless you really want to. You can measure it in triplets and quadruplets if you want to. But um, it's quite improvisatory. So, and then the last arpeggio, of course, is the longest one. So just make sure that you're listening to each octave. Then I would shift here to uh, fourth position, um, seventh position. <laughs> Three, four, five, six position, and then ninth position. So it's ninth position. But listen to the G, G major, G major, G major. Now it's here. It gets all crowded, right? So I always practice up and down. So spend some time up there because, of course, we're familiar with the lower octaves, but the higher octaves uh, sometimes can go out of tune. Okay, uh, so let's move on. The next section is called, oh, then we have the pizzicato, right? So I just, I get ready, make sure my left hand is ready, and I hit it pretty hard with the, with the right hand. So you may not be ready for that, so start with maybe a little gentler. You can also, uh, by starting the G-string, holding on to the G-string a little firmer, then just pull, the whole thing goes. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you found it helpful and enjoyable. I would like to thank Mississippi Arts Commission for their generous project grant that enabled me to make these videos. Please feel free to make comments, suggestions, and requests for pieces that you would like me to record in the future. If you like these videos, and you find them helpful, please like, share, and subscribe so we can reach more people. Enjoy the Masterclass series.